Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm bringing you another YouTube Artist Collective piece. For those of you who don't know, the YouTube Artist Collective is a group of artists here on YouTube, and every two months or so, we all draw or paint or create something based around the same theme. The theme is voted by you guys on our Facebook page, so thank you to everyone who voted for this round, and the theme that won this round was mythological characters. And special shout out to Bentley House Miniatures, who is our guest this round. She makes miniature objects with her own hands, and it's the coolest thing ever, so thank you so much for participating in this round with us. Also, if you guys have participated, please let me know because I love seeing your guys' work. It is my favorite part of the collective. You do not have to be an official member to participate. Anyone can participate and anyone can tag me in their social media posts so I can see what they did. I would love to see if you guys did any mythological characters too. So this theme was surprisingly hard for me. <laughs> The theme is so broad, mythological characters, that encompasses so many different things and so many different cultures, and I had so many different ideas. I thought about doing the triple head goddess from Wicca culture, I considered doing pagan gods and goddesses, I considered doing Ostara, who is a pagan goddess of spring, um, then I, of course, naturally gravitated to Greek gods and goddesses, which is arguably the most well-known of mythological tales. Um, and my favorite Greek goddess of all time is Persephone, the goddess of spring and queen of the underworld. And that is ultimately who I decided to paint. So I will give you a little bit of a background on Persephone. Like I said, she is simultaneously the goddess of spring and the queen of the underworld. And I love how she is both of those things, because you would not think that those things go together, but haha, -ha, Persephone is both, and I love it. So the story of Persephone in a nutshell is as follows. Persephone is the daughter of Zeus and Demeter. Zeus, of course, is the Zeus, god of the sky, king of the gods, you know, all that stuff. Demeter is the goddess of harvest. Now, Demeter loved her daughter Persephone so much. Persephone was beautiful and young and lively and sweet and innocent, and Demeter wanted to just kind of hoard her away for herself. However, lots of suitors wanted to marry Persephone. Understandably. One of those suitors was Hades, aka the Hades, aka King of the Underworld Hades. When Hades asked Demeter if he could marry her daughter, Demeter was like, ha, no way, no chance in hell. Pun intended. Hades, not accepting this answer and doing what a lot of ancient Greek gods do, <laughs> kidnapped Persephone and whisked her away to the underworld. Now, Demeter was very upset, extremely upset, and searched high and low for her daughter, couldn't find her, Long story short, she does eventually find out that Hades took her to the underworld and she demanded that Hades bring her back. However, Hades had fed... Now here's where it gets tricky. He could have fed her the pomegranates or Persephone could have willingly eaten the pomegranates. The story gets muddy here as a lot of myths do. However, Point being, she ate pomegranate seeds, which are the food of the underworld, and whoever eats pomegranate seeds cannot stay away from the underworld for too long. Because of this, Persephone could not permanently leave the underworld. Demeter was even more upset at this, and she decided, okay, you know what, I'm not gonna do my job anymore, y'all can suck it, basically. <laughs> she decided that she was not going to bring the harvest, and basically threw the world into winter for the first time ever. She created winter. Now, this wasn't cool because uh, during the winter, no crops can grow. And if no crops can grow, no one can eat. And the gods are kind of supposed to watch over the mortals. And, you know, like Zeus couldn't have like all the mortals die. So he came up with a plan to try to make both Zeus and Demeter happy. What he decided to do was Persephone was to spend half of the year in the overworld with her mother Demeter. 
during this time, Demeter was happy and would bring spring and summer. She would bring the harvest, plants and crops would grow and everything would be great. However, for the other half of the year, she was to live with Hades in the underworld. During this time, Demeter would become sad and upset again, thus bringing about autumn and winter where no crops could grow. This story explains the changing of the seasons and the story of birth and growth and death and rebirth. It was a way for the Greeks to explain the changing of the seasons and a way to make sense of it all, which is pretty much what a lot of folklores do. I love this story because I just think Persephone as a character is extremely interesting. I think her duality of being both spring and queen of the underworld is just really really cool i find it very inspiring to me um because if persephone can do both why can't i if persephone can thrive and bring spring wherever she goes even after being in the underworld for half a year then maybe i can do the thing too and i try to keep the spirit of persephone with me and just kind of remind myself that, you know, Persephone can do this, I can do this too, and it makes me feel happy. I also love stories that revolve around death and rebirth. I think it's a very beautiful thing and a very natural thing, and I love it when stories kind of normalize the idea of things dying and coming back. That is a huge part of my spirituality, and it's something that it just really interests me and it brings me comfort, so it kind of it's almost reassuring because you know that the spring will come and then you know that the winter will come, but then you know that the spring will come again. So that's also something about this story that brings me a lot of just like peace and joy and it makes me just jazz to think about and I just, I just really dig it. I live, I die, I live again. Thank you. So that is why I wanted to draw Persephone. Uh, she's my bae and I love her. <laughs> as far as the piece itself goes, I used watercolors for pretty much the whole thing and I did really push myself as far as subject matter goes. It has been a goal of mine for quite a long time to start painting full scenes. Usually I just draw a character floating in space, maybe with like some kind of like patterned background behind them, but it's very rare that I actually draw a character interacting with their environment or even in some kind of setting. So that is what I wanted to do with this piece. I didn't just want to draw a character. I wanted to draw Persephone sleeping in the underworld with some spring growing around her. I wanted the story or I wanted the piece to tell a story on its own without me having to explain it. Hopefully I did a good job. I am pretty happy with how this piece came out. Of course, there are so many mistakes that I can see and things that I wish I could fix, but for something that I don't do often, I am pretty darn proud of it. I especially love how Persephone looks really peaceful and just like she's taking a little nap. I would imagine that she grows to kind of love the underworld, um, especially since she spends so much of her time there. But I still also imagine that wherever she goes, she would bring a little bit of spring. So I thought it was a cute idea for her to just be like growing some flowers while taking it like unconsciously while taking a nap in this like creepy underworldy cave. Um, I just thought that'd be a cute idea and I'm happy with how it came out. I do also like how the contrasting green and blue colors look. Um, I just I'm proud of it. I'm also really proud of her body. Like it looks like she's actually lounging on some kind of like rock. And I was just like, it took me a long time to get to this point, but I did it and I'm proud of it. So enough tooting my own horn. <laughs> I think that's enough. I also did add a tiny pomegranate tree and a half eaten pomegranate, just as a little, you know, nod to the original folktale. Now, I will have prints of this piece up on my Etsy shop if anyone is interested. Unfortunately, I will not be selling the original because my very naughty cat was very, very naughty and spilled a little bit of coffee on it, so I don't think I'll be able to sell it, unfortunately. However, prints are available on my Etsy. If you would also like to help support the channel, I do have a Patreon where I do send fun care packages every month. I have real-time videos. We have a Discord where we have lots of fun. So please check that out as well. All of the links will be in the description box below. Please say hi to all of the other collective members. Everyone's pieces are turning out so beautiful and this is such a broad theme that people could really just 
go in so many different directions from it. So this is a very, very exciting one. So thank you guys for hanging out with me today. Thank you for watching me paint. I love you guys and all of your awesome support. So until next time, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.